What happens when you take a group of atheists and a group of Christians, you put them in a room together and you ask them questions about God, faith, and spirituality. On today's video, I give some thoughts on the Jubilee video where they do this. They take a group of atheists and they take a group of Christians and they put them in a room together, give them prompts, give them questions, and they let the conversation go in uh, whatever direction that it goes. In this video, I think that there are some positive things to take on how to have these conversations. And for us as listeners, I think there's also examples of how to not do this. So let's check it out. I'm nervous about what's going to happen today. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous because this is a normal topic that people can usually talk about, but in this climate, it's very touchy yeah. to even say, I believe or I don't believe, you know, right. so. You know, I think that's interesting because, you know, it's, it's kind of a shame that it is such a, like, tension point for people to have conversations about faith or have conversations about their political beliefs. And, and it's almost like we have lost the ability to just have dialogue without there being a reaction. I think there's a lot of reasons for that, that that you could definitely get into. I would think that you would feel safer in the belief category than I feel in the non-belief category. I was raised in a house very culturally Jewish. We talked a lot about God and religion and many different religions of the world, but um, I wasn't raised uh, with any faith, with any religious faith in the house. Just two years ago, I hated Christians. I think I was an atheist, but I voiced all my doubts and skepticisms and they gave me their perspective on it. That kind of opened me up and that's why I'm a man of faith today. Wow, so this guy basically is like, two years ago I didn't even have faith. So that's really uh, interesting that you have a guy that was previously in the shoes of some of the people that are in this in this room. I believe there is good in every person. <laughs> if I think if I just choose to believe that everyone is purely bad or evil, then that's going to be pretty... And then you have to decide what, what the definition of good yeah, is. It, what like is according good? to Christianity, there's no one good. No, not one. But I don't necessarily believe that if no one's good. I, I don't born want... with a sin nature. Yeah, so that's hard. Is like my definition of good it may not align with scripture. So it's hard because that's why I hesitated. Like mm -hmm. I... I'll say one thing I'll, I kind of struggle with in this uh, question is the tension between being made in the image of God and all having sin nature. So... I want to believe everybody's good. If that's antithetical to the Christian belief is that you're born um, is sinful. It's interesting that the three um, of you came who are believers in, in that. I'm not saying people are innately good. I'm saying all, I, I just understood the question as all people are capable of good. Yeah, no. <laughs> Start with Hitler and go from there. Are people, you know, are some people born good and turn bad? Well, I think that's, that's why right. the definition of good is subjective. That's why it's like each to each his own for a definition, we which is kind of hard. We don't know what is right or wrong without the Bible, because it's God that makes the rules. Really? And without God, you, really? have, you have no rules. You don't, you can't make a decision on your own, whether it's good or bad. What about Hitler? He made a decision. He right. thought it was and, good. And he was wrong. You don't need the Bible to tell you that. Well, you're born with that. God put that in you. Okay, so yeah, this is the argument of essentially we have the ability to determine right and wrong on the basis of there being a creator to implement and give the uh, understanding of what we believe is right and wrong. Uh, there's a lot of different viewpoints on that, a lot of different approaches, and that's, uh, that is one that I've seen people uh, present, and that's what this guy is saying. The, as, that as nature, you believe, that conscious. As you believe. That's not a belief, it's a fact. See, that's where people don't, you don't do a good job in conversation when you just say, like, it's a fact, dude. Like, you either believe it or not, so. I'm an author of two books where I give the whole history of the Earth from paleontology, geology, archaeology, publish about four articles on numerous subjects, including politics, uh, science, meteoritics, dinosaurs. I believe my life has worth and value. All right, this is interesting. To my mother. <laughs> <laughs>
yes, I would want people to think that they have worth and value, but I mean, we are all ants on a big ball. We are all very important. The design of those things, if a man were to design it, it would cost several million dollars to make a human, if that were possible. And yet, he's, God has created billions of us. I believe in people. I believe we make our own choices. I don't believe that there is a overriding being controlling those choices or controlling our situation. You are important. I'm, mm, <laughs> so I do not think that inherently just existing gives you worth and value. I think that you make choices, personal choices every single day on how you live your life and how you treat people and how you See, this is where I would, I guess, disagree. I think that every individual, um, at birth at least, um, they have value and worth, uh, regardless if I were to believe, I think, in a God, or regardless if I were to believe in anything. I think that as we are existing as humans and doing life together and we're living and, and things like that, I think that there is, you know, there's there's value to each individual person. Each person brings about something that is valuable, and I think that is, I think that is how we determine like uh, human rights and justice and things like that. Is is we have to have that belief that every individual has value, and, and we develop our beliefs of how we think people should be treated based on on that concept. And I don't I don't think that's solely um, a religious concept, but I think it's definitely one that I think would be agreed by uh, by some atheists, which you kind of see here exist in the world and those well hold on you just made a definition about what value is but you still don't believe you're valuable based on your explanation i said i'm not inherently valuable my to, mm. my being born does not you're just saying based on your contribution to the world determines your value right mm. what you get back. don't no. don't no please don't oh don't. no I'm not, I'm not trying i'm trying to <laughs> there are many people who just exist because of instinct or because do their lives have value? I don't know. If they find value in it, sure. If they don't, maybe not. Who, who am I to judge whether somebody's life is inherently valuable? See, my thing with that is like, that's literally what people do to justify horrible acts is, is there is not a starting point of human life having value or human life being mattering for that, for that instance. So I, I guess I don't really understand her perspective on that. I have had my doubts on the existence of a higher power. Oh yeah, that's your boy. I am a woman of faith and belief. Um, I believe in the supernatural and higher power and a being that there's no accident in, in the way we were created. Yeah, I think anytime I have gone through hardship, I've questioned not just what I believe, I question my life, I question my profession, I question my relationship, so. I, I think, you know, if you believe, whether it's Islam, Hindu, I think you have to doubt it. You can't just jump in there and be like, sign me up, I agree with everything, let's do this. That would be for you, but that's not for everybody that is a believer of any particular religion. Some people don't question anything. But in your view, by, by standing and saying, you know, I don't think there's any higher power, you, do you ever face any doubt of thinking, maybe there is? Well, the definition of an atheist is someone who does not believe. It's not a declaration per se that there is no God. I just want for a second to kind of go back on to what he had said, which I actually find really interesting. And I think it's very um, kind of cool to see a, a guy that's a Christian say, like, you know, regardless of what you believe, you have to have some kind of doubt at some point and wrestle through that. And I think that it's so very true that as you're working your faith out as a Christian, like, I don't. I don't understand how people could not have particular doubts or um, like questions about faith. And I think that he makes a very valid point of like, and, and this is what I, what I believe about following Jesus and, and over time, like growing as a follower of Jesus is working through those doubts and working through those questions. So I definitely think that this guy is on to something where he says, that I feel like if you're a believer of any faith that you have to have moments where you have doubt. I am an atheist activist. I'm on the board of Atheists United here in Los Angeles and on the steering committee for Americans uh, United for Separation of Church and State. All right, come on in. I, uh... <laughs> no, I've never had any doubt because I can see design everywhere. And you are not an atheist, you're an agnostic. No. Nope. You see, I'm an, an agnostic atheist. No. believes. Don't tell me what I am. I am an atheist. An atheist doesn't believe in... I am in, an atheist. No. An atheist doesn't believe in the supernatural, no. period. 
an atheist an does agnostic not believe in no, no, no. does believe an in the supernatural. Is... All right. So this is not a good way to go about having a conversation with someone that doesn't believe like you. If this guy truly believes what he says he believes about Jesus and Christianity and there being a God, how is this kind of approach or attitude being welcoming and opening to someone that already doesn't agree with you? And now what he's doing is like saying like, you're not even what you say you are. You're, you're wrong in what you say you are. And so this guy is like completely shutting off probably any opportunity to share anything that he believes in a way that is like gracious and uh, compassionate towards, towards this person if they believe that uh, they're right. So it's kind of interesting to see his approach here. That does not he just in doesn't God. believe in God. I am telling you what an atheist is. You're wrong. No. Do you believe I am, in the I am an atheist. You know, do you look, believe look, in the supernatural? Look, do not tell me do you believe what in I witches? am. We don't I need to make anybody right or wrong. It's just answer the question, give her space to talk. Give her right. space to talk. Do you believe that this line of interrogation questioning furthers your... No, I'm just giving facts. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm just giving facts. Saved by the bell. I am feeling frustrated right now. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling frustrated because it's even amidst the fellow believers, like the things he says, I'm just like, yo, I don't even know. I don't want what he says to reflect what my faith is to, you know what I mean? I think yeah, I agree with you, bro. Like, I, I feel that to 100% that there are so many misrepresentations of what Christians actually believe. And what this guy is saying is so true that, like, a lot of times, like, I feel misrepresented. And even in this video and in this conversation that's going on, we see a guy, like this guy in the plaid shirt, that is very kind of open-minded and considerate and, like, is open to having conversation, and he's a Christian. Uh, and then you have this other guy who's not very open-minded and considerate, and he's very just, like, blunt, straightforward, and it's like, this is how it is, this is what I believe. And this guy uh, right here in the plaid shirt gives a, a great illustration. I think what many Christians are frustrated with is that there's a lot of times people that misrepresent who Christians are, and that turns a lot of people off to even wanting anything to do with Jesus and Christianity. It's sad um, that people are so determined to make other people wrong. And I grew up in a household with a conservative Jewish mother and a born-again Christian father, and I was in an abusive marriage, and my father yelled at me that I was going to hell when I walked out. I'm sorry. I don't believe in a God that would believe that. Yeah, that's not... It's not, different. and that is objectively, I don't care. That's in crazy. conversations, like, you know, if we have people who are just trying to drive their point through and almost exactly. it, it kind of shuts down conversation. Exactly. I want to know what you believe and why, why you don't. Anybody else? Come on in. Again, we have the power to choose our response to things. So I choose not to feel hurt. I choose not to be misunderstood. I think there's safety in being heard and understood. Yeah. You feel as if the, whatever it is that you want to be understood about matters. You just seem um, like a very comfortable guy who's willing to learn and grow, and that's a lovely, lovely quality in somebody. Nice to meet that you all. Bye, guys. Are we invited to the wedding? Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. I'll see you All right. Interesting stuff. I think that this video is really interesting because it presents, I think, two things that we can take from it. The first is, one, how to not have a conversation around faith and, and what your beliefs are, whereas, like, you see this old guy, like, who is not very, like, nice about the way in which he presents his faith. He's not very thoughtful about how he presents his faith. Uh, he's very kind of blunt and straightforward about how he presents his faith. And, and what we see with this younger guy is that he is much more thoughtful and caring and concerning. And he's actually complimented by one of the atheists on how in which he presents his viewpoint. I think this can teach us something about how we have conversations with people who disagree with us. I think that many people are turned off to Christianity because the way in which they present their beliefs does not reflect the kindness and love of Jesus. And if we are called to be like Jesus, then we ought to look like Jesus in our conversations about what we believe. 
And so I hope that this video kind of maybe shows us something about what it looks like to have a healthy conversation where I think that there are places in this video where they do a really good job of having a healthy conversation. And I hope maybe for you, when you watch this video and you can take it out into the world and maybe have a conversation with someone that disagrees with you, that it will be a healthy one. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You can subscribe here to Rethinking Christianity on YouTube. You can also check out our Instagram. If you just type in Rethinking Christianity podcast, you also find all our interviews and and episodes through streaming on Apple and Spotify and anywhere else where you listen to podcasts. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Blake. This is Rethinking Christianity.